To understand properly the motion of an airplane, we need to know which forces are applied to it. We will see that for an aircraft in flight, we can sum up those actions into four main forces – lift, drag, thrust and weight. We will then take a closer look at the lift-to-drag ratio LOD and we will finally spend some time on the thrust and its orientation. Let's first take a look at the aerodynamic resultant R, in red on the schema. It is the net sum of all aerodynamic forces applied to the airplane, the propulsion force F accepted. We must keep in mind that the separation between F and R is quite arbitrary. In particular, for usual engines, like uh, turbopropellers, the propulsion force is aerodynamic by nature. In addition, it is not easy to decide where the drag due to the engine nacelle, for example, should be accounted for. Is it part of the propulsive force or is it part of the aerod aerodynamic force? This aerodynamic resultant includes all, all, all the forces acting on the whole airplane, the wing, of course, but also the fuselage and the tail. In order to simplify the writing of flight mechanics equations, but also for more fundamental reasons I will explain later, we separate this resultant into its components L for lift and D for drag. By definition, lift is the component perpendicular to the airspeed vector and drag is the component parallel to the airspeed vector. Keep in mind that the word lift can be confusing, as lift is not necessarily lifting the airplane and is not always the opposite of weight. It depends, in fact, on the direction of the speed vector. In addition to lift and drag, we have, of course, the thrust, F, and uh, the weight, Mg. And that's all. It's very simple. Keep in mind that thanks to its definition, the work done by lift is zero, as it is perpendicular to the speed vector. It is the drag which is responsible for the energy exchange with the atmosphere. And that's also a good reason for this separation between lift and drag. Let's take now a quick look at the lift to drag ratio or LOD for lift over drag or L over D. It is obviously defined as the ratio of lift over drag. One can consider it as an indicator of aerodynamic efficiency as it gives us the price, drag, we have to pay to obtain a given lift. The value of LOD depends obviously on the airplane geometry but also on the angle of attack. And for a given airplane, there is a particular angle of attack for which LOD is maximum, which means that the drag is minimum for a given lift. Typical values for this maximum LOD depend on the type of aircraft. It will be around 7 typically for a supersonic fighter which has been optimized for high speeds and high maneuverability. It will be close to 12 for a light airplane like the R400 or TB20 we use at Isai Superhero. A modern commercial jet optimized for transonic cruise can achieve 25 for the really recent ones. And high performance gliders can achieve more than 60. But for that, you need to keep the wing extremely clean, free of any bugs or water droplets. First, hmm, thrust orientation is sometimes difficult to define. Let's take a look at this Mirage 4 taking off with the help of Jato rockets. The main thrust, F1, comes from the jet engine. Engine thrust is usually aligned with the fuselage, and when angle of attack remains small, typically 6 degrees increase, it is approximately aligned with the speed vector of V. We frequently make this approximation in flight mechanics. However, thrust can exhibit a significant component perpendicular to the speed vector at high angle of attack, or if the engine ringing angle relative to the fuselage, epsilon on the schema, is significant, 
as it is the case here for the JATO rocket thrust F2, as you can see. This is due to um, the fact that we want to use those rockets to help to lift the aircraft as well for takeoff.